Good evening. A gas scare for a neighborhood west of downtown this afternoon. Police shut down 52nd Avenue between 49th Street and 50th Street for about a half an hour today after reports of a gas leak. Now an excavator hit the gas line when someone was digging in the backyard of a house. ATCO crews were on scene. They squeezed off the line and shut off the gas with no danger to neighboring homes and buildings. And seeing how it is the start of landscaping season, ATCO wants to remind people to call or go online before they dig. Kids Scotty RCMP are looking for two male suspects accused of a break and enter that happened at the Morning Gold Estates on Saturday. Now, this is a surveillance photo from the owner's security camera. Police say they are looking for two Caucasian males in their late teens or early 20s. A 2011 Dodge truck was stolen. If you have any information on the identity of the suspects, you're asked to call Kids Scotty Police or Crime Stoppers. Now, more than a dozen people in Vermilion took part in a protest this afternoon regarding recent budget cuts to the Persons with Developmental Disabilities program. As Anna Staslow explains, if the cut goes into effect, thousands of Albertans with disabilities will be negatively impacted. Maria Stapler, who works at Focus, a services program for persons with disabilities, says the $42 million budget cut will be devastating to those they help. These guys will be housebound. They will not be going out. They will not be basically 24 hours a day inside a house. I mean, you can just imagine what your life would be like, not even being able to step outside your home, just being inside your house for 24 hours. We have individuals that have volunteer positions, so if they can't, have transportation and they can't have support they can't volunteer and that that fulfills their life they want to volunteer they want to get out in the community the cuts are set to be implemented on july 1st associate minister of persons with disabilities frank oberly was unavailable to comment and mla richard starkey declined an interview this is also going to be affecting uh, family managed services as well as other communities or private services. This impacts all persons with disabilities who have community access uh, written within their programs right now. Focus has been in service for more than 54 years. Simple tasks such as grocery shopping will not be possible if these cuts come through. We have worked really hard within this community to make sure that those networking programs and those resources are put in place. So we don't want to be undoing what's taken years to build. We can't really help out every single one of them, you know. All we can do is just keep them safe inside a house. And really, just being confined like that, they don't deserve this. You know, they're absolutely wonderful people that deserve to be out in the community just like you and me do. The $42 million cut will affect more than 10,000 Albertans. They are requesting that the Ministry of Human Services restore full funding to the PDD budget. Reporting from Vermilion, Anna Stanislau, Newcap News. With many new families calling Lloydminster home, most cities in the school are at capacity. Two new kindergarten to grade 9 schools are currently being built, and plans for future schools are in the works. Kim Smith checked in on how construction is progressing and has an update. Despite a couple of setbacks, construction on the new $30 million College Park School is on schedule to be completed in a year from now. Uh, we're at the point now where uh, the structural steel to hold the building up and the mainframe has been completed and squared away. And uh, the next big piece, if you like, that will be done is the, the roof that will be completed. So. About 15 blocks away, crews are working to have the new Ecole St. Thomas ready for students this fall. The $23 million building is 80% complete. Uh, early fall and late spring winter did put us a little bit behind on exterior work, uh, just a little bit behind on, uh, on the internal work, but we're working really closely with the contractor. 450 students are expected to be enrolled in the French Immersion K-27 program, and about 475 are projected at the public school next year. But until then, there's little room for growth. This transition year between now and when the new school opens up, uh, it's going to be tough. I, I don't think there'll be a, an empty space available in, in, in all of our schools. Sorry, the old Ecole St. Thomas building uh, was really over capacity, so that, that's the reason for this particular building. About 60% of the funding for new schools is paid for by the Alberta government, and the other 40% comes from Saskatchewan. As a Saskatchewan requirement, both schools will have to have child care facilities with room for up to 72 kids. Both directors say their new schools address a need for growth. Just the overall growth 
and desire of parents to have a second language certainly speaks to the growth of our program here. Um, so that piece really, I guess, reinforces the need for the school with that enrollment growth. Um, new families coming into the community, we see that as, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing and a challenge at the same time. The new buildings are incorporating unique features, including an entranceway the length of the school at Ecole St. Thomas. From this one area, they can come into this rather enormous hallway here that will, will form the entrances for kindergarten all the way to grade 7. And a telescope observatory at College Park. Areas, the light that's going to be inside is going to be a very, a very positive, open, uh, stimulating learning environment. And I, and I think, geez, I wish I could be a kid again. So by this time next year, students and staff would have almost spent their first year in the new Ecole St. Thomas School, and staff will be getting set to move into the new College Park School. Kim Smith, New Camp News.